We undergo a belief system called Darwinian evolution that says what? That the changes in the genes, the first premise is all gene changes are random. Well, that's the belief system until we get rid of the assumption that Darwinian evolution is not the way that evolution really occurred. That there was another way. Well, what is that other way? It was first presented in 1988 in this paper that was published in the journal Nature. The Nature is a mainstream journal. And the journal is called, the article is called The Origin of Mutants by John Cairns, a British geneticist. And here's what he found. Listen to this because this is the, one of the most important papers in the history of biological science. Why? Here's what he did. He took bacteria that had a defective enzyme. The enzyme is called lactase. Lactase is an enzyme who breaks down the milk sugar called lactose. And that enzyme is necessary to break down the sugar to extract the energy in the building blocks so the bacteria can use the lactose as a food source to power its growth and division. So these bacteria that Karen starts with have defective enzymes for lactase. They cannot eat lactose. That's the truth. So he takes these bacteria and he puts them in a petri dish and the only food he put in the petri dish is lactose. Talk about stress. These little bacteria guys are going, oh man, there's nothing to eat in here. <laughs> well, the problem is this. When there's nothing to eat, they can't divide. And when they can't divide, they can't reproduce the DNA, which is generally where the source of the mutations occur. And the result is they can't divide, they can't change the DNA. We expect nothing to happen. And yet, in all the Petri dishes, after a few days, there are bacterial colonies growing in every one of them. And the question was that Karen said, how the heck did that happen? <laughs> Conventional understanding says that these can't divide because there wasn't any energy, so they can't change the DNA. How did they change the DNA? So when he examined the DNA, what he found was they didn't randomly change a whole bunch of genes. They focused on the genes for lactose, the lactase enzyme, and they changed just the lactase gene, even though they weren't dividing. It was a whole new mechanism, a whole new concept. And the interesting part about it is when he reported this, the British journal Nature, they wrote an editorial right after his paper. The editors wrote, they said, look, John Cairns is a distinguished molecular geneticist. We know his work for years, but this paper we have trouble with. In fact, the title of the editorial that the British Journal had was, the title was, A Unicorn in the Garden. The point is a little British humor, you know, it's like a fantasy in the Garden of Eden here, you know. The Americans, no sense of humor, because a week later an editorial came out in the journal Science, which is the mainstream journal of American science, and look at the, her the, the title, A Heresy in Evolutionary Biology. What's a heresy? Well, that's for religious people. <laughs> And it said this, there's a religious belief, and the religious belief, and I say religious, is that it's underlined in there that mutations, uh, mutation is a continuous and random process. I'll read it for you because you may not be able to read it, the line underneath at the bottom, it says, Cairns demonstrated that bacteria can choose which mutations they should produce. Then the editors write, anything more heretical can hardly be imagined. Why are they so upset? And the answer is this. Think how profound it is. If mutations can occur as a result of adapting, then mutations are not necessarily random. And if mutations are not random, then evolution wasn't an accident. We didn't get here by accident. We got here by program. The relevance of this is that we actually got here through a process of creation and evolution simultaneously occurring that the organisms were pre-adapting to the environment and the signals in the environment were shaping the organism so that evolution was not an accident. Well, of course, conventional religious, you know, they, we went from religion, people wearing black coats, the new religion, they wear white lab coats, but it's just as much a religion as anything else. And the bottom line about that belief <laughs> is that when we question the belief, everybody, oh, what do you mean energy healing? Ah! Oh, that's heresy. What do you mean changing the genes? That's heresy. The truth is, no, it's called science. But science has a conviction to hold the truth, especially as the pharmaceutical industry, again, is trying to impress upon us because they're selling us a lot of things. So the bottom line is this. What does this say? Well, this paper, uh, let me explain. The paper that Cairns' paper came out in 1988. That was over 12 years ago, okay? 
This paper in Scientific American is in 1997, so that was nine years after. Point about this paper, I have to read it for you because you won't be able to read it. I'm gonna, and I'm going to use my theatrical, I'm on a stage, so I'm going to read it theatrically. It says, evolution evolving. I, here's my theatrical part. New findings suggest mutation is more complicated than anyone thought. First line, nine years ago, John Cairns. And the point was, new findings nine years ago? Where have these guys been? And the answer is this. For nine years, they consistently tried to undermine Cairns' findings. For nine years, they did that. When this paper was published in Scientific American, they're not saying that Cairns was right. What they're saying is this. They can't seem to find another explanation, but they're still looking for it because the idea is it appears to be right, but it can't be right. <laughs>